Welcome to the Post Ride Podcast. Lee Khan, Ryan Lois, and myself discuss our amazing motorcycle trip through Spain in late October and early November 2022. This is episode three. It was Monday, Halloween, October 31st. Time to go get the bikes. We rented from IMT Bike. They have different locations. We chose the Madrid location. Part of our strategy was to fly in and out of Madrid and leave our luggage at the Hotel La Finca. We could come back to that hotel when we were done and have all our bags there. We looked at a bunch of different rental places, and there's a number of places we could have rented from. We could have done one ways from one part of the country to the other. We stuck with the safe route, which was to use an authorized BMW Motorrad rental place. The assumption was if you go through an official motor rental place that they're going to have newer bikes. They're going to be quality guys. I'm sure there's some standards that BMW makes them use. And that generally played out. I thought their communication was good. The price was fair on the bikes. Unlimited miles. And they had all the insurance taken care of. IMT had in every city of Spain, they have a branch. So that gave me a little bit of comfort knowing if something broke that we could find another IMT. Ryan raised his hand for the GS. That's the safe thing to do. John goes for the XR 1000 XR, which is super cool bike, super sporty. I think that was a fun choice for him. And then I had this brilliant idea of renting this device. That looks like a cool bike, right? It looks sporty. It looks relatively comfortable. It's supposed to be their kind of sport touring bike. That's what it is. And the XR is a sport touring bike too. So anyways, I thought I'd get that and everything would be awesome and we'd swap around and we probably would all end up on different bikes than we started on. We arrived to this machine and one, there was a little bit of a glitch with the tires. The tires were a little worn out. You'd actually been concerned over the weekend about the pickup and you were concerned about the drop off too, but you were like, man, what if the tires are shot? What if the chain's loose? What if it's leaking yeah. oil? I was like, oh yeah, it'd be fine. Your tire's going to be fresh. It's an official place. I've rented from HP Motor. I've rented from these other people. I've got experience doing this. They'll take care of us, right? The tires completely pooped out and we weren't just taking it for two days. We had basically two weeks of riding and our intentions where we didn't know everywhere we were going to go, but our intentions were to ride the shit out of these things. The front tire was completely cupped and the guy quibbled with me for a minute and then he was like okay I'll go change it I'm out like talking to you guys while you're loading up your bikes and he comes out and he shows me this other tire and I didn't even really pay attention I was like yeah cool it's a tire man throw it on there I was and my assumption was he grabbed a new tire but he did not grab a new tire he grabbed another takeoff that it, they had and he put it on I looked at it and I'm like this tire's worse than the first one or man I don't know maybe it was a little better probably about the same honestly <laughs> so you took the bike you threw a leg over it you're a good sport yep. we rode yep. him back to the hotel now this is part of the strategy that Ryan had was let's do a quick ride, stay near the hotel. Then we rode back to the hotel and you were just like... <laughs> I gotta get off this thing. I've been lucky in that I've been able to ride lots of different bikes. In three miles, I can tell you, do I like this bike or is it not gonna work for me? The tire thing was messing with me. I just found it to be horribly uncomfortable. It was all weird in all the wrong places. The seat's really low, but the reach was really long to the bars. Your head was in this kind of weird position. Everything was wrong about it. I just got on the horn and luckily they were very kind. And the lady that I interacted with said, come back right now and we'll put you on a GS. And they were quite cordial about it and it all actually worked out great because we showed up and the guy had literally put just brand new tires on it. We asked him when we were there, could we swap it? And they had tons of bikes. And that's one of the cool things about IMT. It's not like they're just renting out five bikes. And what the guy say when we got back, they were going to sell 70 the next week yeah. or something and buy a hundred. We got really lucky because a lot of people were coming in to do a tour with them and go to Valencia for MotoGP. So we may have snaked someone else's bike. You got a GS, we dropped the seat on it. Worked out lovely. I would say IMT did a great job. It, small glitch but it worked out for really for the best. And Just don't pick an RS next time. That bike didn't do anything for me. It was not awesome. I will say that the three bikes that we had performed flawlessly. We had no technical issues around the machines and we rode them all over the place. Take tons of pictures of your bike before you take it. Just take your phone and go around because they, they mark every little scratch and ding. Take pictures also of your international driver's license, your passport. <laughs> Any kind of documents you have, make sure you have a picture of them on your phone. We went back to the hotel. We loaded up on our helmets. We all had the Senna 50C communicators. It's the new one from Senna, and it has the 4K cameras built in. Ryan failed to operate his most of the time, so we don't have very much video from him. And then he hid the mounts for the 360 cameras. You just see me passing it. <laughs> Uh -huh, that's let, true. Let me back up. <laughs> On the wall of IMT, 
was a relatively robust sign that said had a picture of the traffic camera icon and it said when you get traffic tickets not only will they send you the tickets but they charge you 30 euros to process those tickets the jury's still out on that i'm expecting somewhere between i think i said three and five tickets i had three tickets in austria italy and france they weren't too expensive but when they come in the mail it's not pleasant they are a lot cheaper than getting a ticket in california i can tell you that we just got out of town on the e5 and we went up to Lerma, which is right here, and we stopped there for a coffee in the square, and then we were heading to Santander. It's a good four hours and 30 minutes. We got into this area. You go over these mountains. There was some rain in the area. It was super foggy. I'll put my glasses on here. <laughs> I had these things on, my prescription sunglasses. It was dark. It was raining. had the visor down on the helmet, and I couldn't see anything. I slowed down, I don't know, probably to 10 miles an hour or something and the bike was wobbling i was going so slow and i had a big truck coming up behind me and figured out how to turn the hazards on it was a nightmare scenario we had the communicator so i could talk to you guys but i couldn't see at all whatsoever and i lost track of the road and everything so i just went super slow and felt my way as soon as we got over the crest and started heading down the fog lifted the rain stopped and it was beautiful but that was pretty hair raising it was probably one of the scariest parts of my trip it was pouring down rain it was late it was a challenge lee got us a killer place it was Hotel Art, and that was in Santander. This is their website here. Yeah. We knew Santander was going to be a super beautiful place, a really scenic coastal town with this cool coastline. We were coming in like pitch black, and we were on fumes. We needed to park those bikes. I was pretty much cooked at that point. There was just so much activity we had that day, and the jet lag and all that, and, and the super foggy freak show that we had just been in for whatever, a couple of hours. But yeah, man, I was happy to get to that Hotel Art, and it was cool looking inside of there, wasn't it? It was also Halloween night. That added to the effect that there were all those twisty roads that led to the hotel, because this is up in elevation. It's like a hill that overlooks down to the ocean. This is very steep, and there were those escalators that they had built into the hill to get from the beach area back up to this area. The hotel guy sent us here to the plaza right here. We ate at that audio restaurant. I remember they had the olive puree or whatever it was. <laughs> it was so good. That is where the olive obsession started, right there. That's that was where right. it off. Yeah. This is really where it started to sink in. I think I was just naive. We were completely unable to communicate with the waitress. And this is where I guess I still hadn't realized that they weren't speaking Spanish, that they were speaking Catalan. So we were fish out of water. We could not understand anything that the waitress was saying. Finally, we just pointed and she gave us a thumbs up or thumbs down. And she brought us out that lovely dinner. There was a plate of white fish that she had was some of the finest fish I've ever eaten. It was outstanding. I do know that we ordered one or more desserts for each of us at the end of it. After we were completely right. picked out. I think we just said, yeah, just bring everything, just bring all of the desserts, which they did. And we were partying like it was Halloween. My takeaway from that evening was a couple of things. Was one was that for whatever reason, my Spanish was failing me. <laughs> <laughs> that was a little bit dumbfounding, and it took me a minute to really understand why that was. Maybe the next day we realized, yeah, they're not speaking Spanish. That was just us being naive. The thing that struck me was I started to be able to observe these tables of kids and other people interacting with each other, and it's got a feel for the Spanish culture, which is very chill, and people having very intimate conversations with each other with lots of eye contact, not observing or looking around at other tables or interacting but just with their people, just having like really intimate heart-to-heart -heart conversations, you just started to get a sense. The Spanish people are, they're soft-spoken and they're just looking into each other's eyes and having these, what appeared to be like pretty important conversations. We were learning along the way, right? Was this different cultural shift of how they interact with each other. I didn't expect Halloween to be a thing, but it is because it originates probably from Dia de los Muertos, which is a Spanish-Mexican celebration of going back to visit your dead relatives in the town you're from and paying them homage. There are people partying everywhere and costumes. Ryan, uh, you enjoyed Halloween. Did you even come home or were you out the whole night? I came home shortly after. I had the nice room that night, so I enjoyed that with the deck and the view. There was no candy. Halloween and candy are disconnected in Spain. That's an American consumerism thing. In general, like when you sit down to eat, there's no salt, pepper, there's no condiments like ketchup or mustard. They put a little mayo there's, on stuff here and there. And then- no match. You, <laughs> so ranch in Spain. Cokes and Red Bulls have a fraction of the sugar and the sizes are tiny. It was interesting compared to the super size me culture of America. Yeah. Centenaire is beautiful. It's on the ocean. The harbor's there. We had a great night's sleep at the Hotel Art. And then we got up the next morning and we saw some fun stuff on the streets.
That was a heck of a Halloween and quite a ride that day through the fog and the rain like you're just talking about. So tomorrow we're going to head along the northern coast of Spain to Bilbao and to San Sebastian and then all the way into France to Biarritz. So come along. It's gorgeous.